On to Moto2. Now, this is the one class over the weekend that in no way played out in any way the way I foresaw it playing out. I mean, Alonso Lopez has this in his locker. He is quick. He can go and win races. But I think we were all expecting his teammate to be the one to do the business this weekend. And we'll get to that in just a second. But Alonso Lopez, Barry Baltas was brilliant. Garcia, fantastic to end up third. Ayagura did really well to end up fourth as well. Manu Gonzalez mixed it in there for a little while, fell off the back in the end. Positive results, Joe Roberts, Vietti, Arena, something to build on for those guys as well. Ramirez too. What has happened here? I mean, it said it turned out least like I expected to. I probably have more questions than answers at this point. And the big wild card in all this is Pirelli. New tires, we had the same in Moto3, didn't seem to have as big of an effect in terms of who was at the front. This has really thrown a cat amongst the pigeons here because some guys have taken to it and some guys are going to need to figure it out. And I mean, if we're talking knee-jerk reactions, I mean, it's like, well, season over for a few of these guys. They can't ride Pirelli's, done and dusted. They're going to be nowhere this season. In reality, I do expect them to figure it out. And I mean, the obvious candidates here are Fermin Aldeguer and Tony Arbolino. And you could probably throw a Philip Salach in there with that. Expected a bit more from him as well. So in reality, do you think these lads will figure this out? Yeah, I do. I think they probably went out there, got a bit of a shock with how it felt, what happened, which direction they were going through the field. You know, can it another one? Can it? Cannot once again this season. But these guys, I think they will figure out. I think they will have gone out there. I think it's one of those things that once you realize what's happening, you can maybe try and fix it in terms of the way you approach the race and the way you try and um, manage your ties throughout the race and we'll hope for their sake that they can figure it out but it, it is something that I think quality riders in quality teams with good guidance will figure it out eventually it might take them one or two races but they'll get there so I'm not panicking for these guys just yet but I mean if we are talking knee-jerk reactions they're fucked and we mentioned a few guys there that did get it right I think there's something really to build on for I mean obviously if you won the race or Lopez or your Baltus and you finish within a tenth of each other and you are the quickest guys on the day you've obviously know what you're doing it's up to everyone else to catch them now where it has brought riders into play that I, I did think would be there or thereabouts but more in play now than I thought they might be Sergio Garcia and Ayagura, the new MT Helmets team, really do look like they have something to build on because I think over a season long, if you're talking contenders, Alonso Lopez can be a bit on and off. So if it does switch off for him at any point, you got your Garcias and your Aguras do look like they probably are more consistent riders. And we've seen Ayagura do it in the past. And Garcia, I really like this kid. I really think he is going to be like this every week. Baltus, I don't know what to expect from him at the moment. Either A, he's really figured it out and he's going to be there all year, or this was maybe a one-off. And once other guys start to figure it out, he may end up down more towards where his teammate finished that race. Then de Gorberg in you know, 13th. Is Baltus going to be actually more around the bottom end of that top 10 into the sort of low points area? It's hard to say with him. I hope he keeps up because I really do like Big Bazza. He, he seems like a good lad and I really like his style on track. He's, he's, he certainly is exciting and entertaining when he's out there. And if I just have a quick look through the field because with the way it was working, you could probably look through the field and be like, oh, who did sort of do well on the tyres but still didn't probably see it as a race result but someone that you can look at and go if they can sort it out early or qualify better that progression they made through the field over over that race would actually position them really well in terms of a finish result you're looking at Dennis Onchu made progress through the field Celestino Vietti another one progress through the field throughout the day and and especially with those two because they are in what is the best Moto2 team in KTM IO. You do think that with the guidance that they'll get from the team, as well as their ability, there is... They could be danger men. I mean, they didn't show in their hand this week, but you have to think they're going to be a factor later on. And the other one was Jeremy Alcoba, who made... I mean, he was sitting outside the top 20 at some point, came back to finish 12th. And you think that maybe if he'd started maybe a bit closer, you know, he's probably on for finishing inside the top 10 up with Vietti or Arenas or something like that, and, you know with the progress he made through the field. So the tyres worked for him later on. And a lot of guys, it worked the opposite way. There's a lot of food for thought in Moto2. Moto2 is the one that I think is least likely going to be in this running order come the end of the season. The other classes, I think we're there or thereabouts on who's going to be around the front. Moto2, I don't think we are. I don't think we're near it yet. 